Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to take you behind the scenes on the shoot with pro basketball player Drew Lasker. So Drew got in touch not so long ago wanting to shoot some new profile shots for his clothing brand on the northeast coast here in England. So after a quick chat we discussed the type of shots we were looking for and I put some ideas forward as did he and we decided on a location on an outdoor basketball court near the beach on the northeast coast. Now going into the shoot I had a few ideas on what I wanted to achieve and I knew the weather wasn't going to be ideal but I wanted to use that to my advantage. Now the great thing about using off camera flash or artificial lighting of any sort is that you can manipulate the light to make it look pretty much however you want and that's what I had in mind with this shoot. I knew I wanted to create something really dark and dynamic for some of the shots but I also wanted something quite light and airy with a real summer feel to help sell those clothes during the summer months for Drew. So we looked at a few different lighting setups and that's what I'm going to walk you through today talking a little bit about how we achieved the results and got the shots we wanted to get. So I wanted to get the sort of feel I drew was in a game situation outdoors, facing someone off, getting ready to dribble past them and get some real strong eye contact with the camera. As you can see from this finished shot here, I think we achieved that really well. But in terms of the lighting setup, we work with a three light setup on this one. Now we started with one of my favorite modifiers, which is a 95 centimeter Octobox. And I actually took the outer diffuser away from that to allow me a little bit more harshness of light to come through so it wasn't as soft as it could be and when shooting athletes or sports people having a little less softness in the light works really well just to bring out any tone and any definition in the body. So I set up my key light which was my Octobox at about a 45 degree angle to Drew and then also set up two rear lights. Now all the lights I used in this whole shoot were AD300 Pros from Godox, a really versatile battery powered light that I use every single day in my business. Now I set the two rear lights up pretty simply, both with standard reflectors with one with a CTO gel. Now that's a color temperature orange gel, a little bit like this tone I've got coming from the corner here. And what that allowed me to do is to mimic sunshine on a relatively dark and miserable day. Now again, because I was using two standard reflectors as my modifiers on my two backlights, that's gonna be a harsh light, which I'm fine with because coming from the back, I'm okay if they're overexposed a little bit because it's still gonna give me the sort of feel I want to get from the shot. Now, due to the nature of the shot, I wanted a relatively low shooting position, so I'm shooting up to Drew and getting really strong eye contact through the camera. So I took my position quite low, as you can see from these shots, while Drew was doing some dribbling moves and then asked him to gather the ball so that I could shoot directly into him as if he's facing off and got fantastic eye contact through this shot. Now as you can see we've got a little bit of different tone going through the image from the right hand side of Drew's face where we've got that Octobox providing that key light and that orange light coming from the background which gives us that nice warm tone coming through the rear and then our third light which isn't massively noticeable on here just providing a little bit of separation in the background. And then moving on to our second lighting setup. The setup's pretty much exactly the same. Here is take out the Octobox and the CTO gel and have bare reflectors and all three of those modifiers. Now our light position was pretty much exactly the same. I opted for a slightly higher position on my key light, on my front light, just to provide a little bit more definition and tone under the jawline, under the cheekbones and create a little bit more opportunity for shadows to form. Now it's one of the things I say about lighting all the time. It's not necessarily about the light you create but the shadows you create from that light that add dynamic to your images. So setting up those three different AD3, setting up those three AD300 Pros, set it all at full power to provide as much punch of light as possible. I shot from a very similar position, set way back, shooting on an 85mm Sigma R to provide me enough compression in that shot and utilizing a relatively high aperture to bring the ambient light down. Now it was important I brought that down as much as possible because I wanted a dark and moody sky from it and that meant providing as much power as possible from the strobes to bring the exposure back out on Drew. Now I asked him to do a few different dribble moves and what I was trying to get is when the ball came to the top of his hand because that's going to be the part of the shot when there's a minimal amount of movement. I didn't want the shot to be mid bounce, I wanted it to be in his hand as the ball came back up because that's the most steady part of that shot. And because I was shooting on full power on my strobes, I had a relatively long 
flash duration, which meant I couldn't freeze the movement perfectly. So opting for that sort of move was where I wanted the shot to be. Now, as you can see from that finished shot, we've got a beautiful balance of light with that key light or that main light on the front. And then the back left light, I actually had a long reflector on this as opposed to a standard reflector, which adds a tiny little bit of power to your strobe. And you can see we get almost that overexposure on the right hand side of Drew's face, which works really well. So that is a finished shot, worked really well. And it's actually my favorite shot from the whole session. And in the next setup, I wanted to have a polar opposite to that finish, going for something really light and bright, almost trying to channel a Californian sun on a rainy northeast coast to get a really different feel of the shot. Now, bearing in mind the purpose of this shoot, was to sell his clothing brand. So they often sell better with either dynamic or impactful images or sunshine because it emotes those emotions that people want to wear these goods outside in the summer. So I found a little wall just off the side of the court and it was nice and light concrete wall which would work really well as a background and now i opted for a two light setup with this i brought my 95 centimeter octobox back into scene and added the front diffuser back on because i knew as my key light i wanted a really nice soft transition of light no harsh shadows coming from that key light so that modifier is going to work really well now I set this up at about a 45 degree position to where Drew was sitting, if you imagine him along that wall, coming away at 45 degrees, pointing down at a 45 degree angle, about two foot above his head height. Now what that allows me to do, even though I'm working with a soft light, is still to create some amount of contrast and shadow, albeit not too hard. Now that was my key light, but I also wanted to bring in a second light, which is gonna give that effect of a nice bright sun. So I set up another AD300 Pro and used a standard reflector to provide a nice hard light to mimic the sun. Now my second light was set pretty much directly opposite my main light, but at a much higher angle, pointing down at a more extreme angle, and that's what's gonna provide a little bit more harshness in the strobe. In this setup, I opted to shoot high-speed sync, shooting at a really shallow aperture of 1.4 to allow me a super shallow depth of field, which works really well with this image just to help that wall fade off into the background and get a little bit of bokeh, 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 however you want to say it, coming through those leaves in the background where we mimic the sun coming through. And now in post-production, I also added a sun flare coming through in that top right-hand corner just to help provide that little bit more convincing element that the sun is coming through in that shot. Then moving into our third and fourth setup, they're actually exactly the same. We just change our location very slightly between the two shots, essentially just change our position. We set up in just a little basketball and football cage over in the corner. And again, opted for pretty much exactly the same lighting setup we just used in that instance against the wall. Still shooting high speed sync for a really shallow depth of field in the shot. And we use that 95 centimeter octobox again as the key light. Now we set Drew up against that fence. And I shot a few different frames, getting some lead in shots. So that fence just faded in. But actually I love this shot where we've got him stepped just away from that background and we've blown the sky out purposely. Again, to give that hazy sun sort of feel. Now shooting again with that 95 centimeter octobox as our key light and that bare reflector to provide that element of harshness in the rear coming through the cage in the background. Give us a really nice feel to that image adding another element to it with that second light that we wouldn't necessarily get just working with that key light. And again, because we've blown that background out, we get a great deal of separation between Drew and the background because he's wearing that black top. And then for the fourth and final setup, we essentially just moved Drew around a couple of steps and rotated our key light a little bit more, shooting directly onto him rather than shooting across the side of him, working with exactly the same lighting settings and exactly the same power on our strobe because the ambient light hadn't changed and our camera settings didn't need to change. It was an easy transition between the two setups. So just stepping him off a little bit and having that second light shooting over his shoulder again to provide that element of sun in the rear of the frame worked really well to create that, that dynamic and summer feel to the image that I wanted to get. Now again in post-production, just adding a tiny bit of warmth to that light in the rear helped to mimic that sun that little bit more. I hope you've enjoyed the video and the article in Professional Photo Magazine this month. If you do want to find out more about my tutorial videos, you can check out chrisortraining.co.uk where I run a lighting academy online where you can find over 80 videos just like this showing exactly how we set up and shoot from the most basic lighting setups to something a little bit more complex.